and it's feeling much better. Boy, last week I had problems. This week feels good. God's heals. Do we have any other testimonies? If not, then I'll turn the services over to Brother Wayne. Now. No, I don't get too big a hurry. I want you, uh, Clint, to read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And Steve, you'll read the 5th chapter of Revelation. The what chapter of what? 5th <laughs> chapter of Revelation. 5th chapter of Revelation. The whole thing? Am I speaking in English? No. Not that great. It's only 14 verses, I think. Something like that. 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And when we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travel of, travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank you, Clint. Deep, fifth chapter of Revelation. And I saw at the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, 
which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which was in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say, Blessed, blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Isaiah, in the book of Revelation, covers a few hundred years, actually about 3,000. And it is telling us what we should be able to understand because it's been fulfilled. Whenever we look at the Bible, the majority of people own the Bible but don't believe it. Might be true, but it's uh, kind of like uh, our situation going on now, whether we believe anything or not. We're living in a day and an hour whenever human government is in total failure. Cannot lead cannot make decisions. Three countries in South America this morning are going belly up. Guatemala, Honduras, I forgot the other one, but they're all tied. Venezuela is already going belly up. In the Western Hemisphere, and whenever we look and what the Bible declares, there's only one answer. And we're not searching for that answer. I'm not talking about a few people that gathered here this morning. I'm talking about the world. America is not isolated. We're trying to be isolated. We're not isolated. We are part of the human race we are part of the geographical sphere that's called the matter, the earth. And the Bible deals not only with individual nations, but with the whole world. God created the heavens and the earth by his word. He spoke it all into existence. Two of the world's greatest proclamation. We'll try to talk about that this morning. I'm having a real difficult time. I'm not looking for sympathy, for pity. I got enough of that on my own. Two of the world's greatest proclamations. Webster says that a proclamation is something that is proclaimed, a public and official announcement. One of uh, America's greatest proclamation was back in 1863. And Sally and I had the privilege of standing where it took place, not in 1863, pretty close. But we had the privilege of standing in Gettysburg whenever President Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. 
said, we didn't come here to holler this land, make it holy. He said, the blood that was spilled by the fantastic numbers that died on that three-day battle. Never been a battle where as many Americans died as died that day in Gettysburg. Was it three score and seven years ago? Some of you historians help me here a little bit. Four score. Huh? Four score. That's what they said, four score and seven years ago. <laughs> help me, Clint. I mean, uh, That's the only part I That's the only part you know. <laughs> And we, we stood there in Gettysburg. And all these years, that is a hallowed statement. It's a great proclamation. We were in London. I brag about it, I've been there several times, but we were in London and went into the underground uh, bunker that Winston Churchill had throughout the Second World War there in London. And once in Churchill, whenever they were bombing St. Paul's Cathedral, made a statement that reverberates today. We have nothing to fear, but fear itself. They had the original tapes, they played it for us, and we were in that underground with Winston Churchill declaring, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Now, whenever we have leaders that can make a statement that can solidify and comfort and challenge not only England but the world. On December the 7th, Franklin Delano Roosevelt made the statement, this day will live in infirmity forever. Now that term means disgrace, swallow, filth, is what it was going to be remembered as. A day of degradation, not for America, but for the Japanese. The Japanese still are suffering from bombing Pearl Harbor. We were again, Sally and I were at Pearl Harbor after they built the monument. We were there before, but we were there after they built the monument going out to the Arizona. And you can take a little boat and go out there and get on the platform. And it still has diesel bubbling up from the Arizona. And we were standing there, there were about 12 or 15 people from Japan that <coughs> they had bouquets of flowers. And they stood, as was good, there on that platform and went through the Shinto religious ceremony, dropped those flowers out in commemoration one of the greatest mistakes a nation ever made, according to their leaders. We have awakened a giant. We can look back through history and the literally tens of millions of people that have been killed in wars. We had one president that was wounded in the war. Whenever he came and made a most memorable statement, that's not what your country can do for you, but that's what you can do for your country. Now, the, these statements, they go way over just the individual individual, and they talk about, that's not what you can do for your country. That's not what your country can do for you, but that's what you can do for your country. Now those statements that we can remember, and partly anyway, with Clinton's help and Steve's help, was you know, 
added to whatever I said four score and ten years ago. Whatever, you know. But that's not the greatest proclamation that I want to talk about this morning. Luke the 24th chapter. Luke the 24th chapter. When we look at what, what Isaiah wrote, prophesied, and recorded, and realize that it came to pass, fulfilled everything that he said that was going to happen to the Lamb of God. Luke 24, 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came under the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others were with them. And they found the stone rolled away with the rolled away from the sepulcher. If you'll suffer with me, I'll tell you again that. Saturday and I have had the privilege of being there in the garden and been able to look up to the side of that cliff where the tomb of Jesus, it had a stone in front of it. It showed the earthquake in the rocks. It's there as a living witness and a testimony. All oh, many people say, well, that, that, that's a fable. No, it's not. True story written in the rock. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces, to the earth they said unto him, I said unto them, <clears throat> Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. One of the greatest statements ever made, ever recorded. He is not here, he is risen. <clears throat> The next three weeks, all over the world, they're going to be talking about he is not here, he is risen. A proclamation to every individual on the face of the earth. He is not here, he is risen. Now think about it, do we really believe that? Now we know that other proclamations I read that, that they really happened because uh, some of us were alive whenever it took place. And you got to believe that they made those statements. Not from one of our witnesses, but it is recorded. Now Luke recorded that whenever they went to the tomb, the rock was rolled away and they were astonished. And the two witnesses. Those two witnesses come up a little later. He is not here. He is risen. Millions of people will gather together in churches all around the world. There'll be people in the city of Jerusalem and Bethlehem and Bethany and all of the Towns in Israel that will be celebrating among the Jews. Declared he is not here, he is risen. He's alive. And whenever we look around and wonder why so many people that have been exposed to the gospel but have never been willing to commit themselves to the gospel. Or they say, I believe. No. 
They're the ones that wander off, having heard, but not believing. He is risen. John the first chapter. John the first chapter. <clears throat> I don't have a bone in my body that's willing to work this morning. The twenty ninth verse. These things were done in Mesopotamia beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. John was a Jewish rabbi practicing the law and living with the words of the prophets. He saw the decayed debauchery of Israel and he began to preach. <clears throat> the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. <clears throat> and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. There am I baptizing with water. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. America is being absolutely bombarded with decay, with immorality. You know, John the Baptist had his head cut off because he dared to declare that Herod and Herodias So here it had John put in prison. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're living in an evil hour, an evil day. We're living whenever you can't pick up the paper without emphasize taking place. So-called mothers and daddies killing their infants, drowning them, not somewhere else, but right here in Kern County. You can't talk about sin. You can't preach about sin. Sal and I were at a revival meeting in a church years ago, a big church. Miami, Florida. Pastor told me, he said, now let me explain to you that certain things that we don't mention in our congregation. Now this was 50 years ago. We don't talk about adultery because we got some in our church that are committing adultery. You don't talk about immorality in business because we've got some crooked business people. Hey, what can you talk about? You can't talk about lying because we don't know who's telling the truth and who's not. 
immorality and absolutely eating the insides of America out. If you don't believe it, look at the suicide rate. Look uh, at the psychiatric hospitals that are overflowing. Why? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. 1 John 3 and 8, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy all of the works of the devil. The devil's evil, darkness, chaos, chaos. The Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy all of the works of the devil. Keep in mind that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Matthew 3, 1 and 3. John came preaching in the wilderness. John came preaching in the wilderness. Now, the, the, the term wilderness in the Greek uh, is Herodos. And it means lonesome, waste, desolate, solitary. And I'll tell you again, Sam and I were in the Sinai Desert where John preached. In the wilderness, in the waste, in the desolate, in the solitary, in the desert. They're always doing surveys. They like to spend money on surveys. And they claim that we're the most isolated, loneliest, depressed generation to ever populate the United States of America. That we're isolated, lonely in the big crowd. John the Baptist came preaching in that kind of situation. People are looking for escape. They do everything they can to try to escape, and they. they I started to say Disneyland, but that's our holy uh, monument down there. Uh, we spend time down there. But but some kind of escape different time. Go to the mountains, go to the desert, go to the ocean. The problem is not where we're at, but the problem is in us. The desolation, the loneliness, the struggle. We try to find it in uh, the bars, in the nightclub, in the dance halls. Loneliness. Desolate. Waste. Last night news talked about a young girl at the University of South Carolina, 21 years old. And left the bar at 1.30 in the morning with her girlfriend and the girlfriend went one way and she went to walk back to the college another way. Some guy picked her up 1.30 in the morning she had already finished her bachelor's degree and had been accepted into law school. They found her a few hours later, 80 miles from the campus, mutilated, evil. <coughs> the Bible tells us 
the generation, the last generation, is going to become so desolate and so lonely and so solitary. John came preaching in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Jesus comes to us in our desolation. He comes unto us in our ways. He comes to us in our solitary. He comes as a lamb. Now this is going to be preached all, not when I'm preaching this morning, but, but the lamb is going to be preached <laughs> all over the world. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Did he or didn't he? That's where faith comes in. As to whether we believe what the Bible said concerning the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now the sin, I preached it for 60 years there. In the Greek it means missing the mark. Missing the mark. That when we are born, we are born with a, a pre-coding within us that wants to drive us to success, to fulfillment. Something that will fill that empty hole within us. It's a drive. The Bible calls it the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Preaching in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The voice of one crying. John, the first chapter, the 15th to the 17th verse. John the first chapter, the 15th to the 17th verse. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. You remember whenever Jesus told the Israelitic people that were following after him? He, they were declaring that they had Abraham for their fathers. And Jesus told them before Abraham was, I am. Glory to God. John the Baptist said, before I ever appeared, Jesus was already there. Glory to God. Well, that's what he's saying here. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Because he is the eternal God. Hallelujah. Now how can that be? He's the God and he is the Lamb of God. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now the Bible said if the law could have settled the sin problem, then there wouldn't have been an Easter. There wouldn't be a death, burial, and a resurrection. But what the law could not do, Jesus bringing grace and truth is done. Amen. Because the law is external. The law says, Thou cannot, thou cannot, thou cannot. And the Bible said that Jesus comes into the wasteland with grace and truth. Sin is missing the mark. 
When God created Adam and Eve, he placed within them what's called a free will, a free choice, making the right choice. I said last night, it was night before last, I said, girl, that girl didn't intend to get killed, didn't intend to get raped, murdered. She wasn't the only one. If, you, if we knew how many, it would be absolutely astronomical. I, I, I mean, the people that are killed in America today by, for, with violence, In a bit fullness have we all received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. Book plan declares that. We talked about that at Christmas. And the little baby that was laid in the manger, being interpreted, Magdal being interpreted, God with us. Matthew 11, 7, 13. Give the characteristics that John, what want you out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaking in the wind? Did, did you go out to see some milk toast, someone that wouldn't tell you the truth? What we need in America today is a revival of truth. Because you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Whenever we learn to accept what the Bible has declared that belongs to us, we will be able to handle the fear, the doubt, the torment, all of the wilderness that is within us will become a paradise of God. It will become Christ in you, the hope of glory. John was not yet cast into prison. And Jesus, or John said of Jesus, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Matthew 11, 2 and 3, And when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of the disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Now, now it, it is not uh, uh, sinful to doubt every now and then, as long as you don't let that doubt take root and rob you of your faith. Amen. John, the first cousin of Jesus Christ, he was six months older than Jesus. John is in prison. Jesus is now preaching, baptizing, healing the sick, casting out devils. And John told two of the disciples, you go and ask him. Art thou he that is to come, or do we look for another? He wasn't giving up on the hope of Israel. He knew that Messiah was going to come. He knew that the Lamb of God was going to be slaughtered. It was going to take all of our sins, all of our iniquities. He said, If he, thou he that is to come, or do we look? For another. John, the first chapter. Twenty 
26th verse, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who cometh after me, if preferred before me, he shoe latchets I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now when John was in prison, he sent two of his disciples and said, You go ask him. He said, Herod's going to have my head cut off and I don't want to die in vain. I want to know. Or by he that is to come or do we look for another? John had already proclaimed the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God is symbolism of having reference. His character and his vicarious sacrifice both of redemption and of vengeance. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. <laughs> it's a fearful thing not to take the Bible seriously. First Peter, the second chapter, the 24th, 1 Peter, the second chapter, the 24th and the 25th verses. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Not talking about the future tense, it's talking in the past tense. John, or rather Peter, is stating here that the Lamb of God that was slain had taken away our sin, and by his stripes, we are healed. Taking away the sin of the world. That, that's quite a proclamation. I mean, that's saying that there is an answer for the world's crisis. Yes. Amen. It's not just the Greenpeace movement. It's not just the, the, the white supremacy movement. China executed several thousands of Muslims this past month. They're calling it a cleansing of racial. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the whole world. There is only one answer for mankind, and that is if we come to an understanding that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Not law, not some kind of a dictator or government, but grace and truth. Grace means something we don't deserve, but truth shall set us free. Glory to God. Now just think about it. Truth will set us free. The drug maker of the that we're having a problem with just paid the four or five hundred million dollar fine. But they're still producing and misusing, amen, 
I, I take enough drugs, don't think keep me alive in my wife's stuff, stubbornness uh, in, in, in pharmaceutical and about nine doctors that, that I go to. And the fact, I guess, that God's not ready for me. But listen to what the Bible said. He taketh away the sin of the world as a lamb. But we are with sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. We were created in the image and the likeness of God. Adam and Eve sinned that cut off our fellowship with God. But Jesus, before the foundation of the world, God's plan was already in place for redemption. Glory to God. Lamb is mentioned 105 times in the Bible. 31 times in the New Testament. Four times in the Gospel. He meant lamb is mentioned. A hundred and five times, 31 times in the New Testament, and four of those times in the book of John, 27 times in the book of Revelation. When you look at the book of Revelation, you find the city, the light, is the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Lamb's plural is mentioned 81 times. And 79 of those times are in the Old Testament. Two times in the New Testament. Luke 21, 15. Feed my lambs. He told Peter, feed my lambs. Glory to God. First Peter, the second chapter, and the 25th verse. For you are a sheep going astray. For they are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Sheep going astray. How, how do we handle the sin problem? Sin is rebellion against what God wired us up for. Hallelujah. Every individual ever born in a human family is searching for that fullness, that completeness. Lord God, and it can only come when we find Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Revelation, the 13th chapter. Revelation, the 13th chapter. Eighth verse. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was already determined in the mind and the plan and the will of God. Before man came on the face of the earth, God had already provided that way of redemption. The lamb, life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He 
If any man hath an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Glory to God. Don't get excited. God's not in any hurry. Hallelujah. He's going to return. Genesis 4 and 4. Who in Hebrews 11 and 4, I'll bear with it. Talks about the first lamb. that was used as a sacrifice. Cain and Abel, whenever they offered up a sacrifice unto God, Cain offered up a lamb. Abel offered up a vegetable garden. Cain's offering was acceptable unto God because uh, Abel's offering was acceptable under God because it was a blood offering. Life is in the blood. Cain's was a result of his labor in producing a garden. And God told him, he said, if you just be patient, we can rectify this. But Cain's, Cain's jealousy flared up with him and he rose up and killed his brother Abel. Uh, and God came and talked to him and said, Cain, where's your brother? I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. God said, your brother's blood cries from the ground. Genesis 22. Genesis 22nd chapter. Abraham was going up on the mountain to offer a sacrifice. I don't know what I've got this to confuse this morning. Abraham was going up on the mountain to offer a sacrifice. He got all packed up, ready to go, and his son Isaac helped them and got the wood all ready. They went up on this mountain. Abraham's servants was with him. Got everything all ready, got the altar laid out. And Isaac looked at his daddy and he said, the altar's there, the fire's there, but where's the sacrifice? <coughs> Glory to God. I want you to know the battle's not ours, it's the Lord's. Amen. I didn't intend this church out. Attitude of people that are not caring and not concerned. Well, the truth of God's word went into this church out. Huh? Amen. Isaac asked the question, said, where is the sacrifice? And Abraham looked at his son Isaac with a knife in his hand. Said, God will provide. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you this morning, God will provide. Amen. It's darkness and chaos all over the world, all around the world, but God will provide that. He is not going to forsake his church. There's going to be a great number that are having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof that's going to say, we'll heal the sick, we'll cast out devils, we'll raise the dead, and God's going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. They're going to have an argument with God, but Lord, look at all these good things we've done. We're not saved by the good things we've done. Amen. We're not saved. 
better than things we've done. We're saved by accepting the Lamb of God that bore the sin of the whole world. Glory to God. Now around the world, the Jewish Passover month of Nisan, seventh month of the law, Jewish law calendar. And they're going to the Paschal Lamb, the Feast of the Lamb. And they're still looking for the Lamb to show up. Israel this morning is an established nation. Oh, it's been shaken up. That their president's been tried for treason. There's not a nation on the face of this earth today that's not shaken. He said, I'm going to shake everything that is shakable. And the only thing that's going to remain is that which is not shakable. I thank God it's the rock of ages. Care for me. Glory to God. But the Passover lamb, the month of Abib and Nassim. Let me quit this morning with Revelation. The fifth chapter. Six words. One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne out of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all of the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials, full of odors which are the prayers of the saints, and they sung a new song. And thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. Therefore, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood, uh, uh, thy, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Let's read on. And has made us under our God kings and priests. Hallelujah. Now watch it. Glory to God. They had a big iceberg break down at the South Pole. And again, chatting out on this apple, looking at those dumb old penguins. But broke off several square miles. You got another that's going to break off. Down into the South Pole. 
Amen. That, that they got dictators and idiots ruling the world that threaten to blow it up. You got churches, evangelical churches all over the world talking about how that we're going to be raptured out and taken off to some uh, uh, an unknown planet that they call heaven. He said, when you die, where are you going? I'm going to heaven. You know where heaven's at? It's where God's at. Amen? Didn't get an amen out of heaven. Amen. Let's read this again. I mean, we can go through Christmas, we can go through Easter, we, we, we can go through all of these different things. If you look back to Luke, you'll find out that when John's ministry came to an end, Luke gave the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and it didn't include Cain. It started off with Seth. It goes all the way down to Jesus. Let's know what it said. Enhance me thus unto our God. Kings and priests, and we shall fly away on glory. That makes us feel good. I heard some country music last night on uh, Country New Believe. It made me feel good. Wasn't biblical, but it sounded good. And made unto us kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. We shall reign on the earth. You know what's going to be beautiful about that? He's taken out all of the evil and all of the thorns and all of the stinky bad fish and brought his grain into the garden and his sheep into the fold and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Jude the seventh verse Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of fire. The Lamb of God displayed the characteristics of God of both salvation and vengeance. To accept him is eternal life. To refuse and reject him is eternal damnation. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the promise of your word. But we know that your word is true. Amen. Have two men come up and let's receive the Sunday morning title. Dear Lord God, we ask your blessings on this offering. We ask your blessings on those that have to give and those that have not. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Steve will be preaching next Sunday. We will be having uh, communion uh, on uh, Palm Sunday, and uh, Clint will be preaching on Palm Sunday. We'll have communion on Easter Sunday. If I'm still here, I'll be preaching the Easter message on Easter Sunday. Oh, and I forgot, we're going to have a great dinner. Glory to God. What are we having, Ron? Ham?
And then right after that, about two weeks later, we got Mother's Day, and we're going to have steak on Mother's Day. But we're going to is that all right now? I mean, we might as well go in and, and do what the people did when they sat around there in the family, and uh, the city who were barricaded and cut off. There were some of them sat there, and one of them looked at the other, they were leopard, one of them looked at the other. Said, so why sit we here dying? Let's get up and do something. Glory to God. Why sit we here dying? Let's get up and do something. They went. Do we have any birthdays we're celebrating today? <coughs> if not, let's all stand and we'll sing there is a river. Yeah, I haven't really talked about 
Don't go out that way, huh?